here at the UND Medical School, students learn realistic medical training. I'm with Dr. John Allen, and he is going to show us some of the latest technology in medical training. So, I know right here we have a simulator called Adam. And can you tell me about what he is and what kind of equipment you work with here? Yes, Adam is one of our 12 simulators. It's a high tech human patient simulator, which will simulate all kinds of human physiologic responses, everything from blinking to actually speaking with a, with a speaker in his mouth, it has heart rhythms, breathing sounds, bowel sounds. You can give him fluids, he will bleed. If you're not careful, he will even die. Oh, wow. And so you can resuscitate him in emergency events and he responds very much like human patients do. Okay, and so how does this type of technology differ from when you were training? Um, when I trained, uh, we would be taught a procedure or a scenario um, by my, my senior resident, for example, teaching me how to do it. Then the very next episode that it happened, he would guide me, guide my hands through it. Then the third time, he said, you're on your own. So the third time I did it, I was basically doing it on a real patient, having really two practices. And nowadays, students will be able to do this many times before they get in a real life situation. Their confidence will be a lot better, they'll know what to do, and it's a whole lot patient, patient safety is a whole lot better. Sounds a lot safer. Now what does it look inside? Is it like a human body or is it kind of technical, like electronics? A, he's a computer and it's uh, full of electronics, wires, and everything else and we can show you what that looks like if you like but it it's all run by computer so it's computer technology that uh, is inside and this has to be expensive they are pretty expensive um, the um, Adam which is uh, from the company called Lairdall and this is a wireless simulator Adam and all the pieces that go with them the uh, including the warranty and the scenarios and everything about sixty thousand dollars um, and you can get him a little bit cheaper and even higher, but he's one of the uh, one of the highest tech ones that's made. And are other schools using technology like Adam? Several schools are using uh, this kind of technology. Simulation's been around for a few years now. Um, there's been simulation in Grand Forks at UND, not at the medical school, but nowhere in North Dakota have we had an epi or uh, had a scenario like this where we have our rooms all put together and it looks like a regular hospital or intensive care unit. Okay, well it looks like the doctors are about ready to start on Adam here, so I'm gonna head into the control room where a lot of other stuff takes place, so thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we're in the control room where everything behind the scenes happens and I'm with simulator operator Rick Ritt who's actually talking to everybody in there right now and acting as the simulator. So um, Rick, what do you do first when you're setting up and um, getting the simulator going to interact? Well, first of all, we, um, we set up the patient's story and we um, give that history to the providers that are beginning the case so that it kind of prepares them to the, uh, for the right treatment and kind of the right mindset and so forth. And then now, right now, they're, um, they're going to uh, their, their treatment protocol and how they uh, go about caring for the patient. And uh, so I, I may have to try to interject talking here at the same time to them, but... Um, How much control do you have over what's going on with the simulator? So the simulator knows some things that are uh, happening to them, but otherwise as the operator, I have to kind of acknowledge everything that they're doing and how they're doing it. And then based on uh, their patient care, we, we make the patient better along the way, uh, or in some cases they might get worse first. Okay, and, and what's happening to our simulator, Adam, right now? And uh, so right now he's, he's having a great difficulty uh, trying to breathe. And uh, they are um, um, setting him up to position him a little better and giving him a breathing treatment to kind of clear his lungs. And um, uh, of course he'll stop sweating at that point. What happens if the procedures that the doctors are doing happen wrong? Well, then um, he'll uh, suffer a little longer 
And in some cases, uh, he might uh, ter deteriorate quite a bit, so. And will you let the simulators die if things go wrong? Is that okay? Uh, well, in this case, we are, so I'm, because uh, I'm not manning the patient <laughs> at the moment, but um, uh, they are doing a pretty good job, so I'm gonna make them a little bit better as we go, and then um, you'll be able to hear that his breathing is gonna get uh, uh, a lot easier and um, and hopefully he'll be able to talk to us a little bit more in the end. Okay? Okay. And what other features does the simulator have that we aren't seeing? You see it blink, you see it sweat, you hear it. Yes, yeah, so he also you hear his lung sounds, heart sounds. Um, he's able to move and uh, we can also make things more difficult uh, for providers as the, the scenario goes on. Of course all the, the um, the physiology of the heart rhythms and uh, his blood saturation and his respiratory rate and all these other values are all being monitored at the same time. How is this changing medical training and technology? Well, th this gives us a chance to uh, practice in a very controlled setting um, and let folks repeat um, their practice over and over again uh, so they can learn how to do things right when they go visit their real patients in, in their setting. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This is awesome technology. Well, thank you for being with us today. You're welcome.